Okay. Thanks. So because we have two people here from NOT, I assume you guys are both from NOT, we can move right on and do that yeah. first, I believe. So uh, I think uh, I know I don't know if everyone knows what this is about, but I know that there's going to be a new bridge over the interstate at the, uh, just out of the village to the north uh, to get down to the other side there where the businesses are near the what used to be uh, the lot of buildings, most people remember. Not too long gone, but there's a lot of other stuff there. <laughs> so, um, I can open it up to you guys if you want to uh, explain what, what you're doing. And yeah, um, I'm Mahendra Thilia, I'm the project manager okay. for the project. And um, uh, we had a meeting, I remember you guys, um, about uh, two years ago, yeah. and we presented the project here. Yeah. Uh, that was at the conceptual stage, and uh, we made some decisions, and uh, now we are at the final plan stage of the project, and we have prepared the uh, uh, drawing set, and I forwarded that to uh, Dave, I don't know whether you guys uh, get a chance to look at that, but yes. uh, just for the information. They went into the packets, yes. I'll marry except for you, because you got the electronic packet. Okay. That's gonna What's that? He's going to show me. Yeah, so I didn't put it in the electronic form. I put it in the paper form because the size of it. Do you have another one? I do. Uh, I think I do. You can have this one at the top of the areas. Sure. Wait. You have to. Yeah. So it's right here. Drawing. This is through So some of these over here. So, just to give a brief uh, description of the project and where we are with that, uh, if we have time, I will go over that special memory. Uh, Originally, we thought we are going to replace only the superstructure of the project, not the entire bridge, but the superstructure means not the columns, anything above the columns. And that's what we originally thought we are going to do. Uh, and that's what we presented. Um, even for that, we considered four or five alternatives, you know, and we came up with this one as the uh, selected alternative to remove the superstructure and replace with a new one. Um, and to do that, uh, one of the issues is, uh, as you guys know, it's the, the bridge has to be closed and we need a detour and we wanted to uh, pursue that through the pipes, property pipes pit, and we wanted to go through and you know, take that advantage to uh, make that detour happen. And there are some issues and, and we are pro progressing with that, but Joe will talk about that more. But at the same time, uh, when we were doing the final plan, uh, we uh, actually thought a new idea that uh, has been implemented in various uh, other bridge project projects across the nation, uh, which is called um, a GRS IBS system, uh, which means the bridge is not sitting on concrete piers, but an earthen abutment. So it is not concrete structure, but it is with earth structure. But obviously, to have an earth structure, we have to have reinforcements, so reinforcement across, you know, lateral reinforcements. And those reinforcements are geosynthetic, it means uh, plastic, uh, kind of plastic. So to hold the earth together, we use the reinforcement, plastic reinforcement, and that is called geosynthetic reinforcement, GRS. So this system is integrated with the bridge, and 
not many projects have been done in, 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 in Vermont, but uh, there are other states that have used it. In Massachusetts, they have used this uh, few projects. And uh, it uh, sounded like that it is a uh, 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 way of uh, doing projects much le le less cost because it's not comes to, uh, comes to concrete or steel. Uh, and also because there's no concrete and steel, the life of the structure, the life of the apartments and piers are more, uh, you know, life has more life. So the alternative we presented last time when I was here, the deck replacement, because we are not replacing the piers, the life of the structure was only extended up to another 50 years. It's good only for 50 years. We are replacing the structure, but because of the substructure, the columns and things like that, it's good only for 50 years. But with this new method, because we are replacing not only the, uh, the superstructure, but we are replacing the columns as well. That means we are replacing the substructure. And this gives additional 50 years of life. So the structure that we are giving now is good for 100 years instead of 50 years that we presented before. In addition to that, so it is it is uh, life, extended life, and in addition to that, the cost will be less than what we expected before. Um, and and also there are other advantages in co in, in construction. Uh, construction will be rapid, and that's another issue that I, I will I talk a little bit later. But you know, if you go for tile foundation, you know, we dry piles and then we uh, construct this piers, and all that takes time, a lot of time. But this the structure is just filling, you know, filling the earth and putting the reinforcement and then placing another earth layer and compacting it so it goes very fast. So we save a lot of time with this structure. So there's no disadvantage uh, other than, you know, three advantages like cost, constru fast construction, and... Uh, Could I ask you to pause there? I, I don't get how you are decreasing the time if you're changing the project and adding more work. Um, we, it is, well, let me answer your question a little later. Okay. Let me go through this. No. Uh, so this new stuff, this, uh, so the currently the plan that we send it send to Dave, it reflect this new design. So if you see that, you see that the structure, the reinforcement and all that. Um, so now we are at the stage that we are, we are reviewing this plan. We just got this uh, plan from the consultants uh, maybe three weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, and we are we plan just reviewing it at the, at the same time. We want to share with the with you and see whether uh, you have any comments or any questions on that. Um, so overall, our idea is to uh, is to advertise this project this fall, 2024, and to start construction in, I'm sorry, 2019 fall, and <laughs> not only 2019, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this fall we are going to advertise the project and uh, uh, hoping to start construction in next uh, April, in the spring, with the project. That's, that's the idea. Um, So obviously there were several options are considered, but we decided closing the bridge is the best uh, way of doing this project. Uh, and uh, as I said, you know, about where we are with the negotiations of the five property and the other properties, uh, Joe will address that. Uh, so maybe if you are thinking that why the bridge has to be closed, there if there's any other way of doing this. Uh, so the main reason why we want to uh, close the bridge is to do the construction fast, and also we want to do this project in one construction season. If we go for any other alternative, that bridge will take two construction seasons, and it will make uh, 
inconvenience for the traveling public, not only on the town highway, but uh, 41, but as well as the I-91 travelers. So it's a lot of inconvenience. And then also, when you extend the project for two seasons, obviously, the cost is going to go up, you know. And also, the bridge will be, uh, what are we going to do during the winter time? So there's maintenance problems, smoke volume problems, and all that. And for so many other reasons, what we are trying to do is do this in one construction season. And to do this in one construction season, the bridge has to be closed quickly and then open. And for how long that's going to take, the bridge has to be closed. So we are, we are thinking that it will be a whole construction season, but it may be done faster than that. Sometimes it can be done in two, three months because of the, because of the system that we were talking about. It can be done faster. But we are, at the, currently we are allowing a full construction season from April to like October. That's the time we are talking about. So what happens if you don't get the details? Because we are we are going all, all we are doing everything assuming that we are going to get the details to these properties, bikes properties, and what happens, probably that's the question you guys are thinking. Uh, what's going to happen? In that case, for some reason, if, if that is a delay or if it doesn't happen. The only alternative is we have to do this in phase construction. Phase construction means we have to do this half the project at one time and then half the project next year. So obviously the, the, all those disadvantages I talk about, why we eliminated those options, will come into play. So it will take two years to construction season and with all the inconvenience of the public and, and all that and to the increased cost. Uh, and all that. And in addition to that, as I said, we are in the final plan a stage now. But if we had to go back, if you don't get this property and we don't get the detour, we had to go back to square one. We had to go to the design two stages now. So it's going to take it's going to take additional time for the design, not only for construction. We had to start all over the design. So that's going to take more time. So it's design, extended design time, or new construction, new design time, starting from square one, and then two years of construction. So the time we are going to lose is a lot. So what the bridge condition, as you, you know, that it's not in, in, the bridge is not in good condition. There have been a lot of complaints from the public already. Um, there are things falling on the I-91, you know, concrete pieces. Uh, we have been uh, getting this complaint for the last two years and uh, that's another reason why we want to expedite this project and complete this in, in one point project. So as I said, if we go for the phase construction, if, if we don't get this uh, detour, it will take two construction season. Construction and traffic management cost will increase. So now we have managed the traffic through that for two years, so that will increase. Obviously, the, the compact has to be there for two years, so the cost of construction will increase. And now the V-trans cost will increase because V-trans has to be there for two years. And uh, you know, even during the winter time, they have to take care of the bridge. So this additional cost for V-trans. So additional time and cost, and then in addition to that, now we have to start all over the design. So additional cost. So we have, we have to pay for the consultant to do the, the redesign. And also, if we do that, even if we do that, we are going to do one-way traffic. It's alternating traffic because, you know, in two phases, so it's only half of the bridge will be ready. And and, and and we can allow only one direction at, at the time, the, the traffic. So it will be narrow and inconvenient. In addition to that, you know, the maintenance will be tough. Um, and snow plowing and all that is, is going to be tough. 
And in addition to that, the main issue that we have to think about is that even if we have another you know, narrow lane there, if we can that, there's a problem with uh, you know, wider trucks and also the fire fight, you know, the fine, you know, they will have limitations. So that's another problem with going with one lane, narrow lane, one way traffic. In addition to that, when we have a construction, you know, half the project going at the same time, half the project, the public is traveling, it's always a safety concern. So these are the general problems that if we have to go for phased construction in case for some reason the detour uh, option fails. So we, we are completely against that option, but if somebody thinks that why not go for face consultant, these are the problems, and we are trying to avoid it. Unless you have any other questions. Thank you. Yeah. And I know that you had a question. Yeah, well, I think a few of us have questions. I have five questions. Can I go first? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so has this uh, type of construction been used in any other northern states? I know you said Massachusetts, but... I think in Maine they have no state. Oh, okay. But um, I am... Um, I am a geotechnical engineer. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I, I, I design this kind of structure. You know, most of the big transport technologies are structural engineers, but I am a geotechnical engineer, and I have designed this structure in the past. Okay. Uh, not for the not for the bridge, but there are various other applications. I, I have done that in New Hampshire. I have designed that for forty foot wall, forty foot high wall. Uh, it's geosynthetically reinforced structure. So the, I, I don't think uh, there should be any concern about uh, you know uh, is the new structure with a DSF problem. There aren't any more like this in Vermont. There more. Because I it, think the bridge to the landfill and the, and the, to the garden yeah, yeah. state, is that kind of bridge? No, it's got, it's got a single spring beam over it. I know, but it's that it on concrete, it, so. The problems, you know, they built it up like that. As long, long things go back into the earth. And what the concrete you see is just a thin screen. Uh, Oh, right. Just a surface. Yes, yeah. yeah, to, to give a description of the structure there, what we are going to do is now there is six spans, right? Six span bridge. This is six span bridge. So what we are going to do is eliminate all these spear, spears, structures, and we are going to fill in the median between I ninety one north and south. We are going to fill the oh. Oh. so span is eliminated. The bridge span between that and eliminated, and that's where we uh, save the cost. <laughs> And then the development on both sides, outside 91 South and 91 North, there's, a, there's an abutment and the pier on each. On each. And we are eliminating that, we are taking that out and putting again another structure on both sides. Mm -hmm. So it's completely three other structures, one on I-91 North, one on I-91 South outside, and then an intermediate third structure in between I-91 North and South. So there's only very short span bridges over 91 South and North. That's, that's all we are going to have. So six span bridge is going to be two span bridge now. If you see that, that drawing that shows that now. So how about, I understood from what you had written that um, it says the useful life of the structure will be extended at least another 40 years. But you're saying it's 40 years beyond the your original plan, which was to extend it 50 years. So really, this should be 90, right? Am no. I understanding that? Uh, yeah, let me explain that. As I said, the original plan was to replace the superstructure. We are not doing anything below the scope of the structure, which is the piers and the foundation. So if we do just the superstructure, the substructure, the, the piers and the foundation becomes the critical item which will have left of life. It's a shorter life. Even though the span is good, the superstructure is good, the foundation and the piers is not good, that's only good for 50 years. So that's what limiting the life in our original proposal. 
Now we are taking everything out and putting new structure. This good for my ideas. And so, that would be good, just if you're going to present this, I don't know, to the public, that's not clear. Like, this is a better yes. thing. Yeah, twice as... Oh, right. Well, yep. Um, so the it's rain we've had a lot of rain. So is rain gonna delay this construction at all if it rains as you know the construction is is weather dependent, you know. But it's not going to make any difference because it's an earth structure, it's not yeah. going to make any difference, you know, because of the weather, you know. And because it is fast, you know, it, this will be if if it is constructed, this can be done. The, the earth part can be done in a month. This goes so fast. You know, filling just putting earth, putting reinforcement, compacting, next layer, but, you know, it goes by two layers. It goes just filling earth. So it can be done, the whole thing can be done in in, in, in a month even. So even weather becomes it is weather dependent, we have much more flexibility with this structure over structures because it's longer time so it will take more chances to handle weather. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, right. I have to go. That was only yeah. <laughs> okay. You're pacing yourself. Yeah. That's why there was a pause. Um, I, I just, I do have some questions, and I think Matt and I have, have a similar topic, but just that we asked the question that I asked before. Is, um, the proposed project initially was not going to replace the substructures, um, but now you're saying it will. Uh, and I, just a simple project planning perspective is you're adding more work, uh, and I, I don't know why the project will not take longer uh, yeah, if you're actually question. changing all the peers. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Yeah, actually what happens is we are adding more, adding, adding more structure, you're right. At mm -hmm. the same time, what we are doing is adding um, a simpler structure, even though the, the number of structures... But you weren't going to change the structure. So and also, like I explained before, we are making a six-span bridge to two-span bridge. So six-span become two, we are saving a lot of money and, and time. Okay, well, it's the, right now it's the time that I worry yeah, about. Yeah, so that's time, you know, six, building a six-span versus building two spans. I know. That's, that's okay. Uh, I, I, it feels like magic to me. <laughs> you know, uh, so... Uh, yeah. I have to defer if you're th saying that the real there is a time saving on the two span, and uh, and that actually the deconstruction of the footings or the th three sort of pieces and then creating them into the, this new new design um, is won't add time. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I, actually, this is going to be already progressing with this idea, this new idea. So we are at the final plan stage. And because we we studied all these options, and it took some time, and we lost some time, but we are putting pressure on, on our consultant that, no, we, we still have to meet the schedule, and we have to advertise this in, in no, uh, November or December, and we, construction has to start in, in April next year. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a tight schedule, uh, but what I was saying is, so that time is it, it, tight, but I, I don't think that's an issue. That, uh, we will make that happen, you know. Mm -hmm. But if we had to go back to... Oh, I understand that. Yeah, then it will be three years, you know, two, two and a half years. That's, right. that's a different story. Right. If you right. change that plan. Correct. Um, Matt, you want to start? Well, sure. I, there's a lot of concern with the businesses down there, and I'm sure the, the people about the detour. Uh, there's, th there's at, at least three, but there's, there's five people doing business down there. One, for instance, D and D excavation, and the amount of they they, they run a quarry, and just the uh, the mileage alone and inconvenience is going to hurt them tremendously financially, and. 
I guess one of my questions is if you're not, if you're going to replace the superstructure, why? Not, I know the time answer, but why not just do an alternate site and leave the bridge open when you're building the new one? Yeah, it would alleviate all the right away problems. To do what? Say it again. If you, since you got to replace the, the the piers, why not leave the existing bridge in place and use that and build a new one beside it? Yeah, that's a good I know all the time constraints, right. but no, that is a very good question. And what happens to even the selected the superstructure replacement? We thought about that. Why not construct a bridge in a different alignment? And that we consider. As I said, we considered six different alternatives to come up with this price selected one. And one of those alternatives is what we just described. And the problems are, this, there are three issues there. One is, is we need additional right of way if you go there. And then the second issue is there are some historical sensitive areas there. And the third thing is archaeological problem. The, these three issues, because of these three issues, we cannot be, uh, find another alignment. If we go, if we take the path, it might take even additional time to deal with these three issues. Okay, you, you, the, the, you, all three of those things were mentioned in your full report. Right. right. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, but they weren't proposed as obstacles, they were just proposed as dollars and cents. Um, so are you saying that you actually did the archaeological work or did the additional easement work and, and you hit a dead end? The archaeology and the historical thing, you know, they do preliminary studies, not doing detailed studies, but looking at the uh, uh, available information, historic information there, they look at it and say that, okay, this place probably have a historical value. And this is having an archaeological thing. So, what happens is, if you take that path, after that, when we come closer to the uh, developing the plans, not the final stage, not yet the final stage, but in the preliminary plan, what we do is we send people to the site and do real investigation. Okay, there are historical issues there, archaeological issues there. We find detailed studies at that point. So, we didn't go that far with those first. Okay. Okay. Um, I one more thing. My my other concern is is that initially you hadn't done a traffic count, and I don't think you understand how many trips are over that bridge a day. I myself, on a minimum, go over it six times, and I'm sure it's more than that. I think it's we did a study and it was 300. If you look at the report that you were talking about, right. it's present that it's 300 cars a day. Uh, but um, even if it, there's another reason why we don't want to inconvenience the public or the traveling people there. You know, if we can make this shorter, one season, we can avoid all the problems, whether it's 300 or 600 cars, you know, we can make it fast and finish the project, the inconveniences will be big to stress. That's what we are trying to do. Right. Um, if, if we, do move along with the um, detour. Uh, some of the sections would be remain dirt, it appears, and some would be paved. Um, the kind of traffic that would be utilizing it are both um, heavy construction vehicles, um, but there's also deliveries to an automotive repair shop and a steel fabricating shop. Um, last time I was in the auto shop, there was a very nice 1947 Morgan that um, probably wouldn't really like going through a back road for five miles. That um, And that person's business would be adversely affected, I, I believe, because of that. So I guess part of where I'm going with that is, uh, can we talk about this detour right now and what kind of maintenance would be done to assure that the quality of that of that road would be maintained during this period of time. Yeah, thanks again. It's a very good question. That we, we thought about that a lot. Yeah. Um, to give more information about that road, um, we are going to we are not going to be, we are not going to pave any areas unless there's a paving already. 
that some short okay. length that, that, that understood the plan that because there are some sections that were highlighted as paid. Yes, that's paid. Okay. That only is paid. Okay. Um, and uh, but what we are trying to do is we are going to put that on the contract that the bridge contractor has to maintain the road so that there is no problem with the right. Mm -hmm. So the rideability is one of his responsibilities, the contractor's responsibility. Mm -hmm. And we trans will be managing the contractor. So if the road is not good, you know, it comes back to us and we will go after the contractor and say, okay, we have to do something about it. There are some footholds, uh, some, uh, you know, after the road, you know, there may be some issues. So he has to go back and, and regrade those things, you know. So they took the main and that's uh, it will be contractually the contractors work but B trends will be responsible for over management. What's the length of the detour? Is it five miles? Well, two point five miles. Okay. And go around if somebody wants to instead of crossing the bridge if they go all the way up and come down it will be five miles. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, uh, my last question on my list, and then I'll turn back to me. Uh, before that, can I add that I completely understand when you brought up the point and you said that, you know, there are people affected, you know, we, we understand that completely and every project is it, an issue and we try to minimize those things. Unfortunately, we can't avoid and, and keep happy, you know, everybody. We feel bad about that. And, and another thing is, this is a federally uh, funded project, and we are not allowed to compensate for any of this. If they say, if we do that, they say that they have the federal money is out, so we cannot do that either. So that's, that's an issue. And because federal is helping, and that's the reason why town is not paying any anything for the project, right? Town is not paying anything for the project. Probably purchase over the interstate. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it is a town bridge, so it's town. Yeah, it's town town bridge that, for, but we don't do no, never mind. Yeah, yeah, there's a they can get the town bridge, town maintain the bridge. But. Speaking of financial things, are there any financial incentives in the contracts so that the contractor should finish? Uh, Earlier than on time, they would be. There will be, there'll be incentives and uh, disincentives incorporated into the contract. Yes, that's very important. To this project. That's what, that's what as I said. You know, we are allowing them six, six and a half months, but we say that okay, if you finish that in two months, uh, we get so much money. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, do you have anything? Um. You said geotechnical. What is the what is this process or type? I'm just asking because my brother's a civil engineer, works on that in New York. Uh, well, um, geotechnical is anything to do with earth. Engineering is to do with earth is geotechnical. But you said there was something. You were actually reading it off your paper. What this was? Oh, uh, this is GRS, geosynthetically reinforced structure. GRS. Geo. GRS, geosynthetic reinforced structure, GRS. And it, the whole thing, if you can uh, check that by uh, Google it, it is GRS IBS, Integrated Bridge System. I IBS. Okay. Thank you. Has Pike signed off on? I need to have, let me just introduce myself. I'm Joe Castellano. I'm the lead negotiator for VTrans. So I'm working with Pike right now. Um, I'm meeting with our attorneys. Pike has come up with a proposal, and we need to have our legal team review it before Pike, we can counter whatever Pike has come up with for them to sign off. The other uh, property owner that's affected is CB Properties, which is a railroad. And again, I'm in negotiations with them. Nobody else has signed off at this point. We're still in negotiations. Is it common? Have you ever detour traffic through an open as operating as, line? As, as a matter of fact, we met with Larry Major, who is the uh, government uh, uh, affairs director uh, for Pike. He said, no, this is highly unusual for us. So that's 
kind of a, a concern on their part that they also were the ones who proposed the detour because they realized, you know, the challenges that we were going to have just from a time and just a, um, a logistical standpoint that we're replacing the bridge over I-91. And they wanted to have their business impacted as minimally as possible. They said, well, we may, may not be wild about the whole idea. You know, if we can go ahead and shorten the time frame from two construction seasons to one, let's go ahead and do that. And so they were kind of on board with the beginning. And we actually went out and Mahendra, myself, one of E-Trans's engineers, uh, one of the senior engineers, we went out and we also met with all the emergency personnel, uh, what, about a month or two ago? And we looked at it and said, okay, during the construction season, do you see any issues or any challenges of getting your fire trucks up this way or getting emergency crews up this way and nobody saw any issues with it? And even Pike says, well, if you swing part of the detour a little bit wider away from the active part of the quarry, you know, it shouldn't impact our operations to a significant degree. They actually are okay with it. You know, once we look at it and we walk through it. I'm sorry. Um, in the pit itself, we earlier considered a uh, road on the higher yeah, elevation. Yeah, with it. And then Pike came up with an idea and said that, okay, we we are okay if we want to use a lower road. And we looked at that and we thought, okay, it's, it's even safer. You know, the high, it's about 100 feet high hit road, you know, you're putting public there. So we were a little concerned. We had put barriers and all that kind of thing. Now we have a lower road, which is uh, more, you know, it's a safer road and even for that we are going to put fences and barriers and all that so that people are not going to go out of there so we are making all the safety guidelines there. Yeah, the proposed route is much wider than that upper road because we actually drove both of those routes, you know, a couple of times with Larry. And so we certainly got a pretty good, you know, idea of what the uh, potential impacts would be if we decided to go with the upper route as opposed to the lower route. Yeah, the upper road had a construction, like one place that's very, it's very narrow, so we thought earlier that it has to be one-way traffic, so we want to install signals there so that alternating traffic can be accommodated. So here we have a wider road, so we don't we just eliminated that problem too. We've got a couple of questions. Well, on, the, on the contract that that you, you, you've offered here. Yeah. One, I see the word forever twice. Um, and was it the offer letter? Was it the option? Well, it's in the uh, maybe one pages before where we would sign. So I. Oh, okay. So you're actually referring to the option. Yeah. Is it, a lot of this is just standard boilerplate um, that we do. So if you can point me to what you're talking to. Well, it's right. If you if you would open up to the uh, actually the uh, which first page. page. First page and where, where it says uh, on the side it says duplicate. Well, I've got a triple here, but yeah, I've got the same exact thing. So mm -hmm. um, it says uh, you're offering fifteen hundred dollars. Yes. And it says uh, to, uh, to save Vermont. Oh, that's right. I have its agency of transportation. I use presence does freely grant. Um, and it says uh, to the successes and the signs forever, certain temporary reasons. You know, that's that was just a standard legal use clause. I mean, I could talk to our legal team to see if they can alter that, but I know that's just something that appears in every one of them. Yeah, I mean, it would seem to me that if we signed this, uh, that, well, so it is be 100 years from now, I guess, but you could come back and do it without any more. So I had a conversation with Mr. Mammy. Uh, he has right reviewed here. this. Um, and um, down, I believe, first page or second page, talks about it being for the, um, talks about it being for the duration of the construction. Mm -hmm. And um, I spoke to him about that language a bit, and he felt as though he was comfortable with that language and felt as though, you know, there's no specific dates on there. He felt as though it was for the, the duration of the construction when they're done and pack up, you know, that's that this becomes 
you know, that's essentially the end of it. Okay. I asked him if, you know, he said, you, are you accustomed to seeing like an end date on there? And he said, generally there is not one put on there simply for the, the, the ebb and flow of a project, you know, and, and not pigeonholing him to, okay, it's gotta be done by, October 10th, and then it's not done by October 10th. They got to come back and go through the same process. So he was fairly, he was comfortable with that language. And Joe, it, it comes up again in the last paragraph. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But on the same page, or is it the last, the last page? Last page. So page to have and to hold. Uh, page two or four, I guess. Okay. Is. Um, I don't I don't know what the word behoof is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but behoof forever implies that the, the grant is forever. But if you look at that, I mean, we're actually acquiring temporary rights, and it refers to temporary rights. Um, I understand that it says yeah. that, but then it says <laughs> to yeah. its and their own use and behoof forever, you know. <laughs> All right, I can ask my new about that. I know that there, there's another thing that they're working on for you guys. I'll ask uh, a lot of legal people about that. So, Mr. Mamby did have one request on the language in that the, um, the request was that a simple couple of words be put in there that um, the, word, the road be put back to its state prior to the actual construction. So if you know, the pavement was deteriorated by the end of the project, that you know, the roadway is, is left as it was you know, prior to the project. So that was, so the signing of this actually will happen on July 15th, um, but that was, um, so they need to add that to the legal document, and, um, but to expedite the discussion, they couldn't make the July 15th meeting, um, so we had them come in today, um, but the document will add the couple words for that. And also provide clarification regarding what the bill just has done forever. So we'll ask our little box uh, people tomorrow. Okay, great. Okay, my, my second. Sure. My second question is uh, this has got to be a rather expensive project. And I'm really, and, and I'm being really made it clear that you cannot uh, compensate for the inconvenience. But can you compensate the town? Well, can you pay more for this right of way? If you which would, which would, uh, which would, in, in, in a roundabout way, compensate some people because of property taxes. If we have, if we got more money, uh, that'll in fact lower property taxes. Um, we can, you can always present a counter offer, and then I present to my supervisor. I mean, I'd, I'd be a lot happier with another zero. Is what I'm getting at. I, I wouldn't think that would be unreasonable. But, you can always counter and I can see yeah. what they say. I can always run out of five. Is that, does anybody else? Well, that would also give us a chance to uh, improve, um, at least get my roads. Uh, the road that's running north south is Ferry Road. Okay. Um, and that's going to see increased traffic from the major heavy trucks, which now leave yeah. and go directly across the bridge. Um, so in the spirit of what Dave was saying and our lawyer was saying, could we, could we get that improvement um, of that existing paved section? What, what was this uh, request? Yeah, I, so. uh, I think if you're just trying to piggyback on what Gordon was saying, you know, maybe, maybe the amount being asked is too small. Um, if we increase the amount, I mean, one of the benefits could be we could have just increased the quality of the existing road that's down there. Yeah, and this certain amount of that road is now a town, is an out of town road. And uh, that's going to get a lot more traffic, that's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. No, I, I certainly understand. And, you know, it's up to you guys to discuss among yourself. I mean, uh, basically, I presented an offer based on the assessed values. I talked to Dave about this last week, and basically, I was walking through all the work with Dave. So, you guys are being compensated at the same rate as Pike is being compensated, at the same rate as some of the properties is being compensated. It's the only difference being the amount of land and the rights that we acquire. So, that's the only difference you know, in the offer value. The difference in my mind is that, that this project 
as we had mentioned before this evening, impacts a lot of Mountain residents. Mm -hmm. It impacts Pike individually. It impacts many people in Harvard. The yeah, other abutters who are not named as part of you know, yeah. the abutters affected yeah. directly by the, the, the project. No, I understand. <laughs> and to, to which I say that, you know, as part of the negotiation process, so it's, you know, you put an offer out there and, you know, discuss among yourselves what you think would be a reasonable um, sum or a reasonable fee and, you know, present it back to me and we can go from there. <laughs> And also, what I can say is, as I said, you know, this money is coming from the law, and uh, there are guidelines from them now how their money can be spent, and they guide us how what we can and we can't do that. So we can always ask, you know, but they have the, their guidelines and they will they will direct us to follow that. That's that will happen. <laughs> I'm just curious on the last page of the, the mapping. Yeah. Um, the road kind of ends before history five. This section here, I think. Yeah, what happened? The existing road here, so it goes and joins the other. So this is where we are going to do anything after that. We are not going to see anything, but it's going to be a little slow. Okay. So, so, four, so, so this is five right here. This is the slope. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. how do you this one? Okay. You both of these joints here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, you've certainly put in a lot of thought and effort to this. I mean, a lot of thought. So it's impressive. It really, really is. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. And yet, there will be things that you have overlooked. <laughs> there will be things that you will have overlooked. You know, like on any project, you think you've got it all. Yeah. Although you're an engineer, so you probably have it all nailed down. No, we actually we feel very happy that we came up with this new system mm. uh, because we save money and it's going to be faster, and and uh, there's a lot of other projects now will follow this, you know, because we have projects that show that okay, you can do it this way also. So we're the pioneers. Yeah, so okay. so very innovative uh, method here. Uh, so we are happy to do that. I am spending a lot, of my, a lot of my time to make this happen. Yeah, it really so, shows. Yeah, so and, and without any problems, yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how much money exactly? Is it like 25% are you saving or 10% or? Saving. Um, no, it is, uh, it's about four, Four to five million dollar project, and we'll be saving about three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. But we are adding the life and new structures. Yeah, yeah, right. so, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, comparing up to storage there. Yeah. But there are, yeah. So actual saving, if it comes to life, it is more, much more than three hundred, four hundred thousand. You know? Right. For fifty years, for another hundred years, we don't have to do anything. But the previous thing we had to do something in 50 years right. and that's a four, four million dollar project again so so we are saving that yeah yeah it's really impressive well, that's a more question. Uh, there's no. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, we appreciate the uh, cooperation. And uh, David has been very helpful answering all the questions. It's time. And we appreciate all that. Thank you. Well, good luck with this. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Zeros you want to put after that before this one? Yeah, but you know, if that money all comes out of pocket, right? I yeah. mean, the federal government. Well, I, I don't know. 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 I we're not lucky that we have an interstate. We're not? I, I don't think we are personally out our town. <laughs> and if it wasn't there, we could drive down there on the old road. I mean, it's not they're doing this for us. Yeah. We're doing it because they have to. Because they could build this road in between, right through our, our town and blocked us our excess from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got the long view, the historic view. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's true. been, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. You get to listen to the thing. You get to send that fire truck to take out cars and yeah. have accidents. Yeah. You get to put it to the traffic, though. It's off. It comes through our town. Well, it's slowing down. It's, the interstate is a big benefit to everybody. But it's not an additional benefit to the town where it goes through. It's more good. Actually, kind of an inconvenience for the town, right? But it passes through. But Unless you're traveling outside just, the park. Yeah. I mean, it's just how it is. Yeah. You yes. did not flinch when you started to negotiate price. No. He expected that. So. so maybe you should put a couple zeros instead of just one. Well. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to answer a million. Mark's out there saying, oh, the budget. You are respectful. No. Please help. So we're going to move on. <sighs> Put more than 15 minutes there. That was an optimistic estimate. <laughs> Didn't think we'd quite get into the engineering of the home. It's okay. No, that's pretty interesting. Well, yeah. we're going to slide. Yeah. It's all very good. <clears throat> so let's see. We're going to do this. Look at the state uh, police contract. Not Thing. Pretty standard. We've seen this uh, at least my third one I've presented, anyways, um, since it being July 1st. 
Um, you had it before that with um, Bob, and uh, the contract itself hasn't changed with an exception of the rate. Uh, this particular year, it was um, pretty decent rate increase um, of uh, six bucks an hour anyways. Uh, essentially on the overhead cost from 1088 to 1514. Um, so I think they're kind of finally doing some internal accounting there. But that does affect us because the uh, rate that they're charging us for hours of service, which uh, again has remained the same, uh, which is 15.75 a week. Um, translates into 61, essentially $62,000 up from the 55, 56. This has been fairly static, so we had only budgeted 56,000 uh, for the state police contract. Um, the only thing I can say is we tend to run $1,000 a little less. Is that um, all? I thought we ran less. A couple thousand dollars less than the, what the total is, just because some months they can't completely fulfill the the month there. Um, so um, what you see is um, the state police contract for another year uh, at the 15.75, um, however an increase from 55.8 to the 61.9. Why are they so late in telling us this before? I mean, why couldn't they have? So we couldn't budget for this. I uh, probably because our, you know, we start putting our budget, you know, they present this to us in July, you know, literally another three, four months we'll be talking budgeting. So they don't have their, they don't pass their legislative budget until April, May. How much do you know roughly with the revenue generated from last year? Um, it's like eight, nine thousand, I think. Do you do you anticipate revenue in your budget process? Uh, the revenue side of life ops is used in the calculation of how much we have to raise for taxes. So it is. It is not an individual line item revenue versus an individual line item expense. It is complete revenues versus complete expenses and how much you need to, what's the, the differential. And then you, you're looking at your tax, your, your need to raise the remainder amount from the, the taxpayer. This doesn't, I, it sh I'm just gonna throw in two more facts here. Shouldn't factor into the decision making on this particular contract. I think that um, you're a long way away from, you know, having any kind of a decision or discussion or, or you know, what an alternative would look like. Um, however, I will just throw this out there again. Um, two things, um, the Mount Scutney meetings have been talking about um, state police and for, for perhaps offering a little bit more of a community-based approach. Um, also, in my discussions with the school and the resource officer, the contract amount with Windsor at this point is about $92,000. Um, if you just splinter off of that, so on July 9th when they talk about the resource officer and for the school to essentially contract for police services with the town of Windsor, and again this is just kind of numbers thrown about in somewhat of a you know office setting. They were looking at $42,000 of which the school seems to be willing to move forward and, and you know pay $42,000 for a resource officer. However, if the town-wide contract, which would include a resource officer, is 92, a school is willing to pay 42, there is a potential there that you could pick up essentially for a wash Windsor Police Services. Um, that would simply come down to, you know, what you like better, state police or, or Windsor, but just know as we proceed on this path of police services and resource officers and further discussion, that may or may not be 
a possibility. That's something that would have to be discussed in further detail with Windsor, and by no means should it discuss or affect any kind of decision making with this contract, but um, just know that, you know, we kind of talked, you know, we had John Sanderson last year at the Vermont State Police contract. We kind of talked about if it was to be any kind of a discussion other than Vermont State Police that would need to talk to be talked about kind of throughout the year or leading into the budget season, you know, so you would need to have further conversation at a different time, but just know there's some other options or, or things being kind of discussed. <laughs> Elsewhere, you said that fifty-eight was budgeted. Fifty-six. Fifty-six. So that's a six thousand dollar difference. That's a big increase in money. That's about a six dollar an hour increase. I just feel, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it, but if they were well, There is something we can do about it. We what? can change the little not exceed number. For what? We can change the, the number of hours not to exceed. Oh, um, wow. And I think that uh, if we split the difference, I think that would be, I'd rather, I don't, I mean, we've got a money spending problem right now as it is. We're going to start the year with a $6,000. Oh, well, at least if we split it in half at 3,000, I think that's a fair compromise. And I don't know how many hours that might, have. I think that might be just be three quarters of an hour a week. Yeah, that would be three, three quarters of an hour a week is, up, is almost $3,000. I think, are you double checking my math for me? Yeah, thank you. Well, I would say, counter that a bit, I would say that we, we really don't have enough time and we, we don't want to. So if we tell them, you know, it's maybe we then go down 15. Fifteen dollars. They would, and they have a habit of not showing up. Don't they? Some of the time. So we. Yep. Well, some months they have difficulty filling. Yeah. I'd say they so come in. It would in effect be cutting back a little bit on that. I don't know if we should do that. But we are. I, I think that it's kind of crazy intersection um, and we haven't budgeted for this and I, I, I would like to look for a way to sort of minimize the impact but at the same time we have this clamoring that's coming from a section of the community about especially the school community about safety um, and here we are sort of reducing the potential hours um, and also the school budget incurring of 40, $42,000 extra hit for a school safety resource officer that I can only hope would stay in the school budget even though that is our, as a citizen, our budget, but would they try to sort of pass it off, you know, at some point. Um, it just feels like I think we need to um, uh, get back to addressing this. Uh, Dave mentioned that the, is it the municipal resource group? as yes. well as Heartland Cares or just the municipal resource? Essentially group. mainly the municipal resource. You know, are looking at um, some of the state police programs that were being offered um, um, to, to that could increase awareness within the community of how the community can help each other feel safe. Um, so we are, I think we're at a critical juncture where we have to pay attention to this. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I agree with Matt, we're kind of caught off guard, and as Mary pointed out, our, you know, we budgeted last November uh, and approved a town meeting. Uh, uh, so I'm not sure. 
and Gordon, I, I, you know, I really side with you that we really shouldn't cut when the fiscal are worried about what should we do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you both about, you know, cutting and also saving the hours. So it won't be as much as this because they will, from history, they don't fulfill this whole 62,000. Right now, this year, they're, they're <coughs> behind on a few invoices, so they're pretty far behind. But I did take a look historically when I'm doing my budgeting versus the year prior, and that it is two to three thousand dollars less than yeah. when it comes to that. Yeah, so. okay. I, I really don't fully understand how the hours are calculated. If there was um, a bad situation in town that someone called 911 <coughs> and the state police came down, is that considered to be a billable hour for us or is that kind of their general state police work? Correct. The latter, the state general. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But they'll only come. If unless it's the guy is already here, here, unless he's been, you know, here on his own, you know, not his own, but, you know, unless he is here as part of the Hartman contract yeah. hours, and it just so happens that there's a domestic abuse or something and he responds, then it's kind of a part of, you know, the, at that point it would be part of the contractual hours because he's here. Yeah. They booked him, he's signed up for it, he's here on the Hartman hours. Good for us because now he's waiting Hartman at the moment that this happens, but that's kind of the difference between the two. The money's going up and we have yet another trooper headed into Hartman, just moved in last week. Really? Did you want to say well, I'm trying to picture what is happening now. So we're contracting now for up to 15.75. If we split the difference, it would it would be 15. If we held it at the 56, we could get 14.25. So we look at what we're actually getting. Dave, what what do you have any sense of what it actually averages out to? I don't have that. Because it just might help with the decision making and feeling, you know, where you would, might want to go with the numbers to balance out the sense of what what attention is the community getting um, and what's a you know, what we'd want to write into a contract if we want to stay as close to the 56 as we can. Well, one other thing that kind of crosses my mind is that we have been um, fortunate, I think, in Harlem to have been able to um, avoid having our own police force. And by, by doing this with the state police, year after year, we have avoided that, which if we're talking money, um, that's it's a huge difference. I have no idea what our own police force would cost a lot more than, than this. And so I still think it would be cautious on our part to continue these hours and not not risk, um, not risk losing this deal either because they don't want to do it or because people are dissatisfied with the results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm mm -hmm. trying to say mm -hmm. <laughs> that if we, if we can keep, if we keep our, our public happy with what we've got here, it's a good deal for our mm -hmm. I certainly agree with you conceptually that that's it's important for us to, I think, not come out publicly 
and say, oh, we're, by the way, we're cutting back on what the coverage we have. Yeah. Um, and, and it just comes down to dollar and cents. <coughs> You said they haven't raised our rate in the last couple of years, I think. Mean. When I look back as far back as 2016, it's gone from like 53 to 55, and then we had budget 56. Why we didn't budget, you know, upwards to 61? More of a bump than usual. So this is this is more of a buy. Again, I my impression is is that they internally looked at their operations and decided, you know. So again, their over high costs went up four dollars and fifty cents, you know, an hour. So that tells me somewhere along the line they kind of internally decided that they weren't doing what they needed to do. You know, it's broken out the one by the state police overtime, you know, the average of what the overtime wage is, which is fairly static, you know, went up three bucks, but the overhead cost really took a big jump. Sure, is, is that is the 15, 14, um, and the 60, 55, does that make the overhead about, what, 25%, so, roughly? Or would I be sure, should I be looking at, what percentage is that of 75? I think it should be up to 75. Yeah, okay. I didn't do that. So it's really not that high of an overhead. And the fact that they broke it out is maybe what's hap what's hitting us right now. Uh, they've always broken it out. It just this time it took an ink, you know. So for instance, last year they, you know, I got the same contract from last year and overtime and overhead, um, but the overhead was only 10 compared to the 15, 14 at this point. Mm -hmm. So it took a pretty big jump. Can't find it right now, but I think the the police department and weather speed across about three hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. It says payment is required within thirty days. Do, do we pay that all at once? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think we get invoiced monthly. Mm -hmm. They're a couple months behind. What's the motion going to say here? You can, you can jump right in. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I would make a motion that we, we proceed with the contract as it is um, without cutting the hours, even though that's kind of what my gut wants me to do. Yeah, I do think that would be the last thing that's probably about it. Well, the last thing the public wants to hear is the tax rate going up at the end of the year. Well, it, maybe it's but. out of dead heat. <laughs> you know, people are concerned about Bob Megan's. So, yeah, taxes are, that's all good. Make a motion to sign the state police contract. As presented. As presented. As presented. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry, Phil, are you I think I said. Oh, did you? Yeah. Why did you say motions? Because I didn't like how he said it. Well, then I propose it. You propose it. Yeah, you second it. I'm not second it. I'll second it. Oh, gosh. Okay. Your feelings have been hurt now? Not yet. Okay. I'll keep trying. Alright, so let's do that motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone must know. Well, uh, move to proceed with the contract. Mary seconded. Uh, can, we, can we just put in if it's already right as presented? Okay, sure. He said it. Thank you. Did he say that? Okay. 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 
Okay, so uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Are you aye? Yeah. Okay. So you know, so. Not everything is as we wish. Okay. Um, after the manager's notes, I also have a correspondence I want to share with everybody as well. <coughs> okay, Dave. Go ahead. Uh, so three quarters intersection project, the uh, bike ped grant did go in. Um, we'll, went in, fair amount of work went into it. Uh, also, we'd like to thank Rita Cito for her help uh, from Two Rivers out of Quichi Regional Commission. She's also spent a lot of time on it as did Two Rivers for putting together some mapping and some other material that was submitted with it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We'll hear it at the end of the summer. Um, that would be, I think, very good if we get it. it. Certainly would help offset some of the expenses of the underlying project uh, in and of itself. Um, just, I keep throwing this out there, but there are, you know, that would also create some, actually some things that just need to be hammered out anyways. Um, we would still, we would essentially need to get a construction engineer separate from BHB, uh, so we would need to resolve that conflict with them. Um, and uh, it's, uh, Mahandre talked about this with the bridge project. We didn't do a thorough one. Um, we did part of one for Quichi Road with the grant money that we got from that. A historic and archaeological review may very well need to be done on the project, so we would need to go through that uh, process as well. So these are just some things that would kind of, you know, come along as part of, you know, additional strings to go along with the grant money. But I don't think they're insurmountable. Just know that they are additional things that some things that have been done and accomplished that we would be going back and doing. Um, I've been saying this for a couple couple weeks now. Uh, highway department, we continue to kind of uh, make our way through. We have three guys um, still uh, mucking along. Uh, we expect Bill back a week from Wednesday. Um, how much he will and won't be able to do, um, still a little bit up in the air. Uh, we did go to, Martin and I went to a FEMA kickoff meeting last Tuesday for the event that happened April 15th. Uh, so they're just getting rolling with that. We are in the grant system. Um, we will wait to hear from uh, Department of Emergency Management, Vermont State Department of Emergency Management and um, the FEMA folks. We'll have a, essentially set up a, a meeting with them and we'll get into the project and the expenses that we've had and we'll move forward. Um, just a couple things, just to kind of reiterate with Bill Gaughan, um, we, I have been essentially concentrating on wrapping up things that were kind of in the pipeline. So things such as, um, uh, the, you know, the roof to the library, the, the recreation front steps, uh, some of those things, uh, the paving over on Brownsville Road, uh, they still need to come back and do the shoulder work there. Um, they, like us, um, have had issues keeping up with the, the work due to the rain. So there's a fair amount of time spent on that. Uh, with Bill gone, just know, I'll just throw out a couple things that have slipped through the cracks and have waited or will be waiting for him when he comes back. Um, some of the tree cutting, um, I may or may not be able to speak with um, the folks as far as some of the tree cutting needed to be done on Mace Hill. Uh, some of the guardrail work, Matt, you had mentioned um, some guardrail out on Queechy Road and um, Densmore Hill Bridge uh, has an issue. And uh, we were also looking at the paving, even though I saw you kind of heaving and hawing and, and looking at the expense on the paving, um, incorporated a couple years worth of past non-paving and a portion of this year's paving to not eat up the entire part of this year's budget for paving. Um, there was still about $70,000 left from that. 
Um, so remember we said 120, I think. So we did eat into that with Brownsville Road and also the shoulder work we added to that. And I kind of talked about why we had money available for the shoulder work to do. We had kind of cut some of the paving up County Road. Uh, we have been discussing patching or, or laying some pavement essentially down um, Quincy Road towards Gilson. Uh, if anybody's been on that, you may get lost in some wheel wells there, uh, right in front of Skip Saunders' house, a little bit above. Uh, plus, in front of Gilson Road is a little rough. Um, we were looking at picking that up with the remaining uh, money from this year for paving. Um, we have not proceeded with that, and that's still kind of on the back burner, and would we'll wait for Bill when he comes back. Okay. To clarify, you're talking about the Route 5 end of Gilson, or are you talking no, about, about the Harvard Quitchy Road? Oh, Harvard Quitchy Road, that's, yeah. Yeah. Great. that's good. We kind of just patchwork that down towards Roger, um, I can't remember Roger's last name from Planning Commission. Shepherd. Yeah. Shepherd, uh, you know, we kind of landed, but, um, you know, that section into there, um, it's, it needs to be addressed actually right up the hill um, further past that as well. But um, you know, we're looking at kind of filling that in uh, a bit. Yeah, I just rode my bike on that the other day um, for the first time. I, you know, I've been driving it and driving it and driving it, but I realized on the bike that it was like a six, almost a six inch drop. Um, and, you know, where the right side of the tires normally sort of sit. So it was just a challenge for me to sort of stay out of that and not go into the middle. Yeah, it's a little hairy, particularly when it rains. Um, yeah. You know, again, you know, it's kind of patchwork until we yeah. get done with other paving on this side of town and, and can look at Gilson, uh, I'm sorry, Queechee a little bit more. Um, so there, are you going to actually pay the section of the road or are we just talking about $70,000 worth of patches? Uh, I can't answer that yet. <laughs> We haven't really looked at it. You know, it may be a matter of the wheel wells are so deep. Might be half of that. You could potentially pave the wheel wells. They did something similar over on the way to Windsor mm -hmm. on Route 5. Um, but you know, and again, you may have to put a little bit of, you know, another coat over that, you know, but, you know, literally it's, I don't know, at least a half foot deep there. Um, so you could, yeah, it's bad. You, you could almost literally pave, you know, and talking with Chris Bump over in the state of Vermont, you know, he was kind of talking about you could literally just pave the wheel wells and almost, you know, you, you come back to where you should be. So, you know, it, it, it's a matter of, you know, it's it's kind of a complex situation over there as to how, you know, even patching it. You know, you know so in a way, you know, even if we did, you know, a hundred yard stretch um, and somewhat paved it, the shim layer is going to be the bulk of the pack, you know, because just to shim those wheel wells is, you know, and then you would probably put half it and, you know, over it. I wonder if you, you fix the base and then just do a three-inch page. Uh, the same money. You can even grind it up. No, just to, just to replace the base on the, where it sunk so bad and then pay. So cut it out just yeah. in those? And then build it up, turn it right back up. With it. But mm -hmm. that's not cheap either. So. So these are things that have been kind of, you know, in your absence, you know, we're moving along at things that were in the pipeline, making sure that gets completed. But some of the stuff that needed to be picked up along the way here coming out of the spring is kind of followed by the wayside. And I was just, I guess I'm just identifying that as to where we're at with some of that stuff. Um, Finance, delinquent taxes, we are still heading towards tax year. We talked quite a bit about that, a little bit about the Board of Abatement. Uh, we're now down to 10 parcels from the 12 that is in your uh, report here. Uh, we continue to move along. We're under $200,000 $200, in delinquent collections at this point. 
um, actually probably more towards 192, 193, because one we haven't physically gotten, but uh, we believe it's in the hands of the lawyer. Uh, so we're waiting on that. So we're poking along ever so slowly there. Um, the, as you know, the change of uh, the notice of change of appraisal did go out. They are now in the process of booking grievances. Uh, the big question is just how many grievances do we get um, and turn around and be able to lodge the grand list and to set a tax rate by August 5th. Um, so that's what we're kind of waiting to see and see how that process goes uh, and how smoothly it goes. Uh, buildings and grounds, we are, um, tomorrow we have second interviews with two candidates. Um, we hope to move that uh, along as well, um, bring somebody in uh, by mid uh, third week of J July. Um, spoke a little bit about uh, Chris Cole's invoice in the very beginning um, with the engineer. Uh, we are, uh, the contract has been uh, extended to Charles Brennan and we, um, I haven't yet to see it, so I'm hoping that that comes back with no issues and that we can get that going. The engineer uh, has spoken to Mr. Brennan uh, about a July date. Uh, and Josh Boyton uh, did offer to volunteer his services to change the window over the 21 house. Um, we still are looking at a closing July 17th. Nothing has uh, been communicated to me to um, differ my opinion on that. Uh, and the trees will actually, I believe, are scheduled for tomorrow morning. Uh, John Dumas will do the cutting uh, uh, along with uh, the highway crew. Um, and July 4th is coming up. I will just say, I don't think any churches are participating this year with Old Home Day, so. The brick churches. The brick churches. The, 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 the. The new church, the new, the, no. the North Hartland church. Some of the old standbys are a little less than what we, you know, it's, uh, you know, the, the participation on some of the, you know, the, the folks that have been kind of staples um, has slowly kind of um, disappeared a little bit. Um, but we are still expecting a very good break. So should we up our game? I mean, are we expected to dress in costume that? Nobody has won the float of the year award in quite a while. You can resurrect that. You can stand up there like the, you know, the, the statue of yeah. kind of do. I'm all for her. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, I did meet with Christine and David Baker again. I just wanted to convey that I do feel confident um, in the July 9th uh, forum uh, that, that uh, will focus on the resource officer um, and not a broader conversation um, town-wide. Uh, and I felt pretty good about the discussion and um, what they are looking to do. Um, spoke a little bit last time, I do believe that uh, Chief Sampson will be there, his resource officer, and I believe they were looking at the Windsor School principal to be a part of that as well. Uh, do you have an update on the dumpster that we approved? We went by the property and I saw like an eight-foot trailer uh, with, filled with garbage bags, but I didn't see a dumpster. I see, sir. I have not. Uh, I asked um, David Singer as to, because Bob went on vacation, as to where we were at with that. And he said, hold tight. And uh, so I'm holding tight. And um, we haven't spent any money. And uh, you know, I'm waiting to hear back from the health officers as to okay. you know, how best to proceed. Driving by the dumpster's gone and the property looks really nice. What? Really? The dumpster was there, then a couple of days later I drove by and the dumpster was not there and the property looks really, really nice. At least it looks the nicest I've seen in many, many years. Yeah, it was just by on um, Saturday and there was this eight foot, 10 foot trailer that was filled to the brim with garbage bags. So, 
so I wasn't sure what that meant. Yeah, yeah. the big dump is gone. I know that. Okay. Yeah, beside the house, the big gray one. Okay. And Martin, I uh, was part of that. Uh, the Legion did uh, chip in two hundred fifty dollars of that. As well. So I'm just going to, uh, as part of the correspondence, I'm just going to pass this around. Um, this is a correspondence from, uh, I had a couple of correspondence with Doug and uh, Betsy Warmer up on Cream Pot Road. Uh, this letter dates back, they made it a point of bringing this down to me, uh, maybe the beginning of last week. Uh, the So it wasn't last week, it was the week, so we'll, a week ago, last Thursday, we had the four inches of rain. Um, as I put my, mess, my my update, I'll just say that we didn't have any huge washouts, but um, I certainly have probably fielded the most number of phone calls I have since I've been here as far as individual issues out there with roads. One of which came from uh, Doug and Betsy Warmer. Now, apparently, since 2005, they have had this berm that <laughs> extends the length of their property. My understanding is it is, in, and they are at the bottom of Cream Pot Hill, the big Cream Pot Hill. Is this right beside, uh, he's on the Planning Commission? David Strauss. Yep. Right. Yes. Uh, they are at the bottom of the hill. Um, it actually, it's kind of a, and then the hill kind of goes back up again, so the water does come down towards the warmer's house. Uh, there is a brook in front of their house, maybe 10 yards, eight, 10 yards off the road. Apparently, their concern historically has been washouts and the material running down into the stream and clogging or polluting the stream. So the berm was built in front of our house, and it, I think when it got graded by West Windsor, or got graded at some point, part of the berm got taken out. And during the four inches of rain, you know, there was a little bit of material that got into the stream. Um, and they are demanding that we rebuild the berm, you know, as, you know, that day and um, forever keep that in place. And I actually read the letter and I've actually been out there and I wanted to correspond with you that I have issues with the berm. Um, it essentially drains water. David Strauss is essentially right downstream from this. So what we've got is the warmer's house front yard looking spotless and beautiful and the water is as pristine as it's going to be however the water follows the berm and then goes right down David Strauss's driveway has washed out David Strauss's you know driveway pretty significantly and then goes right down the driveway uh, and the driveway has been washed out and then all that material then goes into the stream because the stream kind of used and goes down behind David Strauss's house so we haven't avoided the material going into the stream we've just put essentially more material in it just doesn't go in in front of the warmer's house and now goes in besides the Strauss driveway so Interestingly enough, as I read this, um, what they're really saying is that you should be properly maintaining your roads with a crown and a ditch. Um, and I noticed that I don't think the warmers would be very happy if we cut out the four or five maples that line their grass in front of the stream to put the ditch in. But I guess I'm just not ready to. I wanted to let you know because I suspect that there, I expect a couple more phone calls in the immediate future as to why we haven't fixed this. My immediate answer was when we have the grader out there, look, the grader will fix it with the berm. I'm not ready to just go back out there and fix it because I think it's created all kinds of problems for David Strauss, and I don't think we've done anything for the stream. So I need to, I spoke to Doug Harrington this morning, said, look, before we address this, I think you and I and Skip need to go out there and kind of take a look at, you know, what we might want to do here. So there's some deep history here. There's some deep personalities here. Um, 
you know, we get several phone calls in the winter time from this couple about road maintenance. So this is not, you know, this is. I don't, I don't remember topography. I don't know exactly, what, but would it, it could it possibly, um, could it possibly put Colvin on the David driveway and keep us water going rather than it going down this driveway? I don't know what's on the other side of David Strauss's driveway. You know, the answer is, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, but David's is a negative pitch, so you know what I mean? David, I know, I, I know it driver goes pretty steep down. Yeah. Out. But if you have them, yeah, I don't know. Water go by, so it wouldn't. Now that, that right? actually now that Matt brings that up, it's a it's a drop off almost from the road, um, and not only is it the one drive, it's actually a two driveway. You know, kind of when he comes out of his driveway, he can go a little bit that way and have a cream pot that way, or he can kind of go this way and have a cream pot that way. And it's not. I remember I thought I was just there. Really wide driveway. Out. I was just la there last Thursday, and actually, I thought my car was going to bottom out coming out of there. So it's not a, it's not a, it's not a pitch that you could probably that the culvert would, you know, would, it would have to be in the road almost. Um, and I don't know what's on the back on the other side of Strauss's driveway, you know, of the way, you know, so where if you put a culvert in with it's then going to go into, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's... Well, I guess the thing to do is, like you said, culvert and things like that. It's not doing really anything. Yeah. It's doing well for them. It's not doing anything for the, the neighbor at this point. So... How do you know about this letter? Uh, he made he brought it in to make sure I had a copy. Oh, okay. so it needs to be done immediately. Immediate, as in even after 15 years. <laughs> I at first was you know, I didn't have any issue reestablishing it. I just was you know my answer was kind of you know. Several people wash out a couple on Best Road, go up towards your place there. I think. A few other places at uh, Webster, there was an issue. We had some issues all around. So, so were they okay with that? Uh, they were okay with me putting it on the list for now. Um, I don't know if they will be okay with anything other than what they have put in there they at this point. They, they kind of do. So. I, I wouldn't be, um, I, I wouldn't be afraid to suggest the removal of those trees. And that should, and I'm reasonably certain that we will not be interested in that. I don't think so. <laughs> it needs some, it would need some, you know, there's not really any room coming down the hill for a whole lot of ditching. You know, there could be some right in front uh, by the road where he is. Again, once you get to David Strauss's, I'm not sure what the answer is there. Other than turning it inwards, maybe a little, but again, you got a stream there. Uh, you know, stream in David Strauss's driveway kind of. So oh, I have a question from your notes. You mentioned the windshield stickers for the Hartford transfer station. Uh, Martin, maybe you know the answer to this. Have, have you noticed if the number of bottles being sold here has gone down in the past few years because of the fast patch program? Um, I haven't. I always recommend it and people still buy the sticker. Well, yeah, because this is very limited in what it'll take. Right. You know, scrap metal, recycling, and trash. Well, I saw them take a mattress. I saw them put a mattress in the... Yeah, well, well hopefully he, he doesn't were, put a refrigerator on there, a tree on there, an air conditioner. Right, yeah. No, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Today, I sold, I think, 28 stickers just today. We don't have one anymore because we use the fast trucks. Same I don't buy a stick anyway because I go down Saturday and want to eat a clock. Well, and Bob, he doesn't take like fluorescent bulbs, he doesn't take batteries, which is why we have this thing of the 
Everybody loves your battery box. I'll tell you, everybody loves the battery box. Really? Thank That's you. So They're coming in there. All they say, thank you so much for the battery box. This is so great. I don't have to throw up the trash anymore. People love the battery box. You know, I love the one state. My oh. district. Really? Yeah. Well, congratulations. Mm -hmm. No, I, 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 I think we sold, I think we sold more stickers this year than we did last year. Really? I know last year I was new when it was all over, but I paid pretty, pretty, pretty close attention. I'll tell you, in the last five, six days, we we went through, I think there's 16 on a sheet. We went through four sheets, 16. 64 stickers. The, the flash trails from You're the, not aware of it? I know people do it, but I don't know. I can talk to that length about it. You want to hear about it now? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I yeah, yeah, it was not really necessary. All right, that, that was my question. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we marching? Oh, let's find that out. That was an hour ago. Okay. I can't make a commitment like that. It happens today. It's only a few days off. It's only a few days off. If I'm in Canada, well, how about that? That seems fair. Well, you already know you're not going to be in town. I don't know much. I'll tell you about my problems after the meeting. They must be the same problem we have every year. We could, we could really offer therapy if you march with us. What do we do with that? Yeah, but it's at 10 o'clock. It's at 11. The parade's earlier this year. We'll see. Yeah. I just wondering if we should discuss this. Don, you, you said we were slated to sign this right away next meeting? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I spoke to him right after the fact and just said, let's talk tomorrow because I don't know how long that was before there was any extra zero added discussion. So uh, I just wondered if, if you should have a number, if you're going to speak with him, should you have a number from the board? Would that be helpful? It would be if it differs from the number with an extra zero. No, I have to. I have to offer a respectful number for negotiation. So, million dollars off the table. That's a bit much. I, think all I, I would. I would like to go um, with the one more zero before the decimal point. Just see what happens. Wait. In addition to what he's saying? No. With what he's saying, yeah. I would also like to add that they take care of maintenance patching on the town road due to the extra volume of traffic on that section. Well, you know, Matt, that, that right, had made it yeah. and didn't down, it down towards the detour. Yeah. Right. So come July when that school holes and they, they can patch them just as easy as we can. So they might as well. That's, that's not paved, is it? Yeah. Oh, it is paved. It's paved all the way to 20 minutes. Oh, oh, let's see. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. Cool. And there's been some patching down there, but the town didn't do it. So it was done. <coughs> By um, Todd, yeah, and because um, they were doing some work around his place, so I mean, the roads were pretty bad down there. Um, and, and, and my feeling is is that if we direct um, the two excavating companies down there, yourself and D and D. Plus logging trucks going along that way, that's gonna just really use the town road more than it gets used today. Yeah. Well, and you've got all the you've got all the MDs customers. Yeah, yeah every which and the town. The town trucks are gonna be the dope, so yeah, so that's gonna be like ten times as much traffic from across the you know yeah, the stretch stretch. I'm just going to throw this out there. I think you guys are completely underestimating the idea of a two-season construction on that. I think that, that I would that we should have two seasons. Well, you're, you're underestimating 
the inconvenience of a two season construction season. So yeah, there, is a, there is a there is an inconvenience of towing through the pit, but I would rather run the highway trucks through the pit for five months than have to deal with an alternative for two years. So uh, yeah, well, just no, I'll only speak on behalf of the town. Right? No, no, if there's no, I think we all understand that. I would I'm just, just suggesting that they throw coal patch in the holes when they develop. I'm, and at the minimum that it is, is all I'm suggesting. That's why I, I'm just, as I've heard this discussion progress, I guess I would just say as you guys press this that we are somewhat you know, attached the hip on this project, and it's certainly to a benefit to have yeah. a five-month project, not I, I, a prolonged I, one. I, I didn't feel I felt that the two-season construction was kind of getting thrown at us as a warning, um, and and I think he was kind of, you know, I I didn't see it. I mean, what was going to take two seasons? Was it using the existing bridge and then building a new one? It was if it was uh, one lane. One lane. Any, anything other than the uh, the, the, the detour is a two season except, project. Except if they built a bridge next to it, that would also be a two season project. Yeah. Right, but a bridge next to it would not need the detour, right? Because you're using the existing bridge. Anything other than the detour is a two-season project. But think about a two-season project. Right, but in text, that would have, that's all I'm saying. I'm not going to say, you know, I'm just going to say I would rather run the highway trucks for five months through the pipe pit than to deal with a two-year construction on depot road. That's all I'm going to say. All right, but why are, you, why are you bringing that up? Are you thinking that this negotiation with the extra zero is going to prolong this process somehow and then it'll end up in two seasons or no i think they'll say that i think you know they'll either say yes or no on the extra zero okay. i think that'll be fairly quick okay um you know either will or it won't but i'm just saying just realize you know as we i'm just you know as part of this i guess i am saying don't get greedy on this you know we are you know essentially a cooperative effort on this as a host town to ensure that you know running over that bridge now is not going to do a 1940 you know whatever any justice on that the thing is already you lose a tailpipe going over it so just know that you know there is a benefit to a bridge reconstruction on this and a timely one. That's all I'm gonna. You know, that's my only point. Dave, I'm in total agreement. But you know, I you know I hit the potholes going south of Route Five just as much as I hit the potholes going across that bridge. So, I mean, the state roads are the state roads right now. So I do think I hear you, but I do think what we're saying is a board. We're not asking for asking for uh, a, a more of an easement payment to offset some. You know, we've mentioned two or three things that would been high. Just I think this is on the hinge on whether it passes muster with the with the federal money. I don't think it's anything. Anything to the state, and where the other arms they pay because, because the money is coming into the federal government, mm -hmm. and whether they see it as payment for inconvenience or whether they see it as uh, um, just a simple um, arrangement of the town. I think that's what it's going to come down to. Well, and uh, I like the idea that it's a negotiation. I mean, they can come back and say no, or they can come back and say, how's this? Yeah. Okay, so this, I think we're going to agree on that. Go for the zero. What zero? To the left. <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, I'll see need for last, but. Uh, um. So, uh, so uh, I guess I don't know you, but are you, do you have a question or? Uh, oh, no, I, I basically I just thought I'd stop by and give me some how this works to 
Okay. And your name? Christopher Blood. Our meetings used to start at 7, but now they start at 5.30. Oh, yeah. We're just close. Right. I just want to play this one. Oh, okay. That's why. I'm not saying anything. Just want to stop. Well, it's 5.30. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you for coming. Anything else? Anybody have anything else? Nope. Okay. I guess we're all done.